Hi there. Um, yeah, let's get started. I'm Alan Stenhouse, and I'll tell you today a little bit about my work developing a prototype system for specimen metadata transcription in the um, biological collections, as well as give you some idea of our overall vision and aims within the collections domain. Um, oh, sorry, next slide, please. I'm part of the um, Collaborative Intelligence Future Science Platform within CSIRO here in Australia. Um, <clears throat> and our aim overall is to develop the science to help humans and AI uh, work better together to exceed the performance of either alone. Um, as you can imagine, this involves multiple disciplines and in addition to this project within the National Research Collections of Australia, um, we have pro projects in other domains as well as some foundational Sintel projects uh, looking at key aspects of human AI collaboration such as trust, workflows and skills. Uh, next slide, please. Um, our vision overall is to transform collection science to tackle diverse environmental challenges by fully leveraging the complementary capabilities of human and machine intelligence to improve digitization, curation, data integration and management and delivery. Um, so we're developing methods and tools around these targets. existing specimens at the digital format, uh, especially the specimen metadata, to uh, collaborative data curation, that is finding and fixing in errors, anomalies and so on, and three, releasing the data for further taxonomic and other research purposes. Next slide, please. So, um, oh, wait on, I think I've messed up here. Oh, that was our... <laughs> Hmm. Okay, uh, so within the collections, there are about 15 million specimens, uh, most of which are still to be digitized and made more widely available. Um, and in comparison to you guys, there's about 12 million, I think, insect collect, uh, specimens in the collection. And we, we've just finished digitizing the herbarium, which is 1.2 million um, specimens. And as you can imagine, these um, pose a few challenges and probably, oh, next slide, please. Uh, these pose a few challenges, uh, particularly around labels containing uh, not so much typed, but handwritten text in a whole variety of formats, um, as well as different data formats, different languages, and so on. Um, next, please. Here are some samples from the National Insect Collection. So you can see, oh. Uh, upside down somehow. <laughs> Interesting. And in fact, um, that doesn't actually matter usually. Um, and uh, and some from the herbarium. Next slide, please. Um, and uh, yeah, if, if this one I included because I just read a book on banks earlier this year and I was interested to see this one in the collection. Um, so next slide, please. Our initial focus has been on developing an application for, um, for our collections team to uh, enable improved metadata transcription um, using AI services uh, and human AI collaboration. So I've been developing this prototype um, using ex existing AI models for optical character recognition, tr translation, and lately using uh, large language models for uh, metadata entity extraction. Uh, or named entity recognition. And here we see two of the screens, um, the specimen image showing the bounding boxes around the text items, um, which comes from the OCR process, and the metadata screen on the right showing the entities which have been automatically extracted uh, using the LLM. Next slide, please. So the first step is doing optical character uh, recognition on the specimens. Um, I'm using Google Vision, which works well and can be accessed easily using APIs, uh, but there are still errors. And I have to say, humans also have problems deciphering some of the handwriting, but overall, uh, Google Vision does a great job. Uh, we can also, using it uh, with another API, we can perform translation from many languages, which is, which is an issue within at least our, our collection, and I'm sure it is in others. And this translation, um, has dramatically improved in the last few years with newer AI models. 
Um, next slide, please. Um, so after OCRing, we then need to extract the entities from each image so that these can ultimately be put into your collection database. Um, at the moment, we're using large language GPT models from OpenAI uh, as they supply an API for easy programmatic use and with, with good performance. Um, this enables us to more easily extract a larger range of metadata um, from specimens, including species names, collectors, determiners, dates, lat longs, and other location information, as well as more complex data such as localities, habitat, and, note, and notes of various sorts. Uh, next, please. So um, here are the res results of a query using the GPT-4 model to extract the metadata from the specimen text. Note that there are some errors, um, and these come from both the LLM as well as the OCR process. Um, then the prompts and parameters that we supply to the LLM model, which define our requirements, are key. And this includes how we define the entities or metadata elements that we want to extract. Um, some initial testing can be done using the OpenAI playground uh, at the URL on screen. Uh, and we can refine these further using our prototype. Uh, and if anybody hasn't used, or I presume probably a lot of people have tried ChatGPT, um, but using the playground to play around with various types of queries is very useful and it's free to, free to access as far as I know. Um, there are trade-offs when using uh, GPT 3.5 versus 4. 3.5 is faster. Uh, Four is more accurate, but unfortunately, four costs about 20 times as much. And um, note that on this example, the, the um, result probably cost three cents or so. Um, next, please. Some models provide estimates of uncertainty about their predictions, which may be useful when checking the data. Um, and here I show a simple, simple visualization within our prototype using some threshold levels of uncertainty to, to highlight um, uncertain items or uncertain entities. And this is only to do with the uncertainty that the large language model has about its predictions, which has no, not necessarily any relation to how accurate their actual extraction is. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Um, so how can we improve the results? Uh, by using collaborative and interactive refinement. For example, we can edit the OCR text while looking at the context of the specimen image. And I don't show that here, but in the prototype you can do all this. But this is not really scalable. Um, you know, when you're talking about handling thousands, tens of thousands, or hundreds of thousands of images. We can retry entity extraction using a different model. For example, GPT-4 rather than 3.5. Um, next slide, please. Um, well, next, but we can refine the prompts that we use uh, to provide better context and guidance. So you should provide examples and specify formatting requirements or other data mo modifications that you might desire. So here, for example, I specify that all dates should be in uh, converted to year, month, day format. Uh, you should also specify the entities you want extracted and the output format, for example, tab separated or JSON. So you can see down the bottom there, I've just, though those two items, or actually three now, are uh, built up into one query along with the OCR text from the OCR process, um, which is passed to it. And those have an effect on what you actually end up getting extracted. Uh, and next slide, please. Uh, so yeah, we're also starting to build in some cross-checks cross and entity lookups using online references. So very much appreciate the work that a lot of you are doing to provide APIs to these services. Next, please. So future steps uh, include developing other digital curators, if I can use that term, uh, such as data curation, tray extraction, and data linking assistance to augment our human curators. Uh, next, please. We'll also look at extending the knowledge base uh, as large language models are huge, but limited and relatively fixed methods for extending their capabilities are rapidly emerging. Um, we can fine tune the models with our own data, 
which may provide more accurate results, but has time and cost implications. Uh, we can use retrieval augmented generation, uh, which is one way to where we can develop and use our own data sources to provide more relevant contextual information to the queries uh, to the LLM to improve the responses. Um, I'll also be exploring how we can usefully integrate LLMs, ontologies, knowledge graphs, neural graphs, and other emerging methods in supporting and enhancing our digital curators. Um, I'm especially interested in how we can integrate these methods into powerful and easy to use tools and workflows to assist our collections teams, both here and around the world to enhance and improve their data management and curation. And yeah, thanks to our team and thank you for listening. I'm happy to take any questions and do get in touch anytime. Next, please. Um, okay, so there is um, a question online um, from Rukea. It, you just mentioned in your talk, you translate stuff before feeding it um, to GPT. Have you tried doing it without translation? It understands other languages m remarkably well. Yeah, sure, and and it does do it well. I mean, you uh, you can. I do use Google Translate because I it does a better job of translation. But you can also ask as part of your query to uh, the large language model to translate and extract. So it'll extract it in the language you want. It'll also, I, I haven't done it in other languages. Well, I could do it in some other languages, but not so many. Um, the, the problem for me is evaluating. So, <laughs> uh, but, but even so, you know, I can see that it's, I, I've tried some and it translates and, and extracts very well, so yes. Are there any questions in the room? So Patrick Rusch, um, Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics in Geneva. Um, so you are using a generative model to do information extraction. But in principle, I mean, people would use like uh, an analytic model like BERT and not a generative one. And the reason why they would do that is because Rarely, but occasionally, the generative model will hallucinate. You did not mention this issue in your analytics. Are there cases where it, there is hallucination? Um, there was some in the past that I noticed. Uh, and it was uh, one of the parameters that you can set on when, and this is something you can try out in the playground, uh, is called, uh, I've just forgotten it off the top of my head. Um, temperature. temperature, thank you. Uh, and if you set that to zero, it is more deterministic. Um, so you lose the randomness and less likely to get hallucinations. But um, I suspect that you do. You also get errors, of course. Um, and where it, uh, particularly with the GPT 3.5 model, it has a lot more problems some at times doing anything and it will return basically uh, nothing. So um, again, this is why we're not relying on this to do our thing. It's a collaboration between human. This will come back. Humans will then uh, curate the, that data. But uh, and this is going to be uh, used in in the wild or actually within our group um, in about February as the collection seems moving to a new building. So they're going to have some time spare to actually go through and do all this. Um, but the, the speed up of, I mean, the time taken to do all this uh, and the cost is minimal uh, overall, even though it has a cost. So I think I calculated even using GPT-4 for 100,000 images was something like $1,700 to process them all. And that, you know, it's again, it's not perfect. So there is always work to do. But, uh, but getting the range of, of full text, things like habitats and other information and localities into the, at least on the starting right entities is, I hope, good progress. Um, okay, okay, yeah. thank you. But uh, cost-wise, using a BERT model or Roberta would cost just zero. Apart from you've got to train it, right? Yeah. So, so yeah, again, I've, I've used it because I'm not a machine learning person uh, and I know um, I did talk to them, and this was a, 
easy way for me to get started. So, so I agree totally. You know, you're going to get much better. As I said, I think about fine tuning. So, basically, a similar process. Now, if anybody has any good ideas, because we have all this data in the collections, I did think we could use that to do this tuning of models. So. We have one more question in the chat, um, and it's from uh, Mikhail. And did you consider chain of thought prompting or alternatives? Um, I have considered it, but um, yeah, I guess uh, all of that is a question of time and cost and so on, as you're charged for the amount of tokens or amount of text effectively that you put in and get back. Um, and I wanted easy to handle responses. Uh, so either tabular or JSON or some other format that you want. Uh, so that was my um, that was my intention. But uh, I'm sure there's other ways of doing it. So feel free to experiment and tell us your <laughs> tell us your results. <laughs> Great, thanks. Um, Thank I you. think we need to move on to the next speaker. Thanks very much. That was interesting. And um, next up, we have Michael Elliott, who I'm guessing.